52 miles south of Sydney, the flourishing city of Wollongong celebrates the biggest day in its history. 80,000 people line the streets to welcome the British monarch and her consort. The Queen has travelled nearly 15,000 miles to be present here today. The multicoloured decorations and cheering thousands bear witness to the city's acknowledgement of the honour bestowed. thrilling, memorable sight, and one that will be indelibly imprinted on the minds of all who were privileged to see it. Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh, in their now familiar open car, are escorted to the steps of the town hall. It's an overcast sky, but a really bright, enthusiastic welcome from almost the entire population as the Minister for Justice, the Honourable R. Downing, welcomes the royal pair before presenting the Mayor, Alderman J.J. J. Kelly and Mrs. Kelly. This moment follows weeks, even months, of preparation. Twice in this century, Australia sent the flower of its manhood to fight for king and country. But never before had an opportunity been given for the majority of Australians to see the reigning monarch. That inward sense of loyalty to the throne and all that it means was never more clearly shown than here in the city of Wollongong, New South Wales, Australia, Thursday, February the 11th, 1954. Her Majesty is wearing a teal grey Shantung skirt and jacket with matching hat and black accessories. Alderman Kelly, wearing ermine-trimmed robes for the first time, gave dignity to one of the most colourful receptions the royal couple have had in Australia. On a raised dais and in full view of the watching thousands, civic leaders and their wives are presented to the Queen of the British Commonwealth of Nations and her illustrious husband, the Duke of Edinburgh. A moment none will forget. Her Majesty replies to the Mayor's official address of welcome and then is escorted to the waiting cars. The royal progress continues to the Returned Soldiers Memorial Hall. The stiff southerly wind and threatening rain by no means dampen the ardour of the cheering crowd. Special trains and buses brought thousands from Mittagong, Barrel, Nara, Milton and other south coast centres. ex-servicemen, men of three wars, form a guard of honour in three ranks on either side of Church Street and fronting the returned soldiers' memorial hall, in which Her Majesty is to preside at the official luncheon. The Queen is officially received by Mr F. W. March, President of the Wollongong sub-branch. These 500 servicemen, soldiers of the Queen, resplendent with blazing medals, come from sub-branches at Albion Park, Austinmer, Barrel, Coaldale, Corrimal, Dapto, Jeringong, Helensburg, Kayama, Mossvale, Nara, Port Kembler and Winona. The inspection is informal and the Duke chooses more than one opportunity for a quiet word with one of these South Coast veterans. At least that was the intention, but often he has to bend down to hear the replies of the ex-servicemen above the cheering of the crowd. p.m. 
and Queen Elizabeth leaves for the Wollongong showground where 13,000 school children from 130 schools in the district are given a special opportunity to see and hear Her Majesty. Pretty blonde Margaret Buttle, 15, captain of Wollongong High School, was chosen to welcome the Queen and the Duke. The gusty 20 mile an hour southerly is embarrassing, but Margaret is equal to the occasion. She can't hold the speech and her hat, so leaves the hat to the elastic. Then the thousands are let loose to demonstrate their loyalty as only children can. The Queen and the Duke drive round the showground to a thundering roar from 13,000 throats. An indelible memory for every child, and a fitting end to a day the Queen will surely remember, the Wollongong welcome.